If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. 72 degrees in downtown Silicon on this Wednesday morning, the 21st day of July. District 33 State Representative Ben Robbins joins us this morning. Ben, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Jimmy Dell. How are you? I'm doing well, and I hope you are. Last time um, we, since the last time we've talked, been a lot of exciting uh, excitement of a District 33, and uh, let's begin in Coosa County with the new jobs there. That, that that is a phenomenal thing. I'm very excited about that. That I was able to play a role in. Uh, just so you know, Westwater, it's a company based out of Colorado, is opening a graphite processing facility in Kellyton. So um, what they're doing is they're going to take graphite to begin with because they want to enter the market so soon. They're going to be buying their graphite from China before they even start mining it in Coosa County. Uh, but from talking with Westwater, they found a graphite source that's similar to the graphite in Coosa County. And so they're going to start refining it in Kellyton, which is going to be over 100 jobs at an average wage of about $25 an hour wow. in Kellyton, which is phenomenal. Uh, and that's just the first wave. They're expecting three phases of build out. So you're going to have over 200 employees in, in, in about five years. But to start, they're going to be about 100 employees. And their goal is within the five years, they're going to start the graphite processing facility in uh, Kellyton, and then after some, you know, after about five years, they're going to start breaking ground and start mining the graphite because now they'll have the source to sell mm -hmm. their graphite to themselves at the graphite processing facility. But what it means, not just for Coosa County, but for all of East Alabama, not mm -hmm. just District 33, is phenomenal because um, I don't know if you've seen, but you know. BMW, Honda, <laughs> GM, GM, all the major car manufacturers are saying they're going to have electric yeah. vehicles. And GM says by 2030, they're going to be electric. Um, so what that means is they're going to need batteries. And one of the main components of batteries is graphite. So therefore, if we have the material, it just makes sense that industries such as battery manufacturers or suppliers to battery companies, those all... It, it will create a new ecosystem of businesses around Kellyton, which would mean anywhere from Sylacauga all the way, you know, to Auburn, across all of East Alabama could get a large benefit and new industry to come in just because of this graphite. You, you, you know, this has been talked about for several years. It's been in the planning stages for several years. I heard it talked about and talked about and talked about. And, and I, I compare it maybe uh, just uh, apples to orange a little bit. To Honda, you know, uh, Honda, uh, uh, they've got all these spinoff companies and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Right. I hope that it has the same impact as, as, yeah. as a Honda does. And it's it's in a great location, really, because you have Honda in Montgomery mm -hmm. and Honda in Lincoln. And it's kind of strategically between the two. And it's not far, really, to get to BMW or to Mercedes and uh, Vance. But one thing, that's, one thing that really helped this project happen was a partnership that Alex City agreed to run water to the industrial park in Kellyton. And we were able to get called a, a Growing Alabama tax credit for the project, which allowed, which that means is private individuals can now make donations, which are now tax deductible to help with the infrastructure build at the industrial park in Kellyton, which that was able to tilt the scales just enough to be able to get it to be built and us and they're saying by the beginning of 2022, they're going to start, that's when they're going to start kind of, it's going to start operating. There'll be uh, and people working there. For people uh, in East Central Alabama from, from uh, Childersburg uh, going uh, east uh, to Sylacauga and to LX, where physically is this going to be? Um, are you, from, you know, if you go to Kellyton, so if you're on right. 280, uh, are you familiar with, there's an industrial park on yeah. the right. It's going to be in that industrial okay. park. So kind of right before you hit Tallapoosa County. Mm -hmm. So you're still in Coosa. You're going to turn in the industrial park and it's going to be in the back part of the industrial park. And it's, they've, they are in ownership of 200 acres. So it's going to keep, it has the, they're going to keep building. Wow. That's fantastic. It, it is fantastic. Great news for jobs. For families, uh, relocating possibly? Uh, possibly, and just for Coosa County. I mean, it's going to be the mm -hmm. largest employer in Coosa County. And Coosa County, from their school system to their roads, are always starving for tax yeah, revenue. Let's face it, they've suffered. They, they, they've suffered. And this is an opportunity to provide tax revenue mm -hmm. that can then help their school yeah. system. 
So it's a win-win for everybody, I, I think. And, and I'm so glad they chose Coosa County because of the, the fact that they've suffered and it's, and, in, and it's in District 33, which is always Absolutely. a good thing. Absolutely. You know, the session ended back several months ago, and, and one of the things that was, was talked about was, was the, the shoring up and, and getting more Internet service into communities. How's that going? Well, you know, it's still a work in progress. I, and I think I told you last time we passed what was called the Digital Expansion uh, Authority Act. And so that created the Digital Expansion Authority. And right now they're putting members on that board. And the purpose of that board is to figure out how to strategically spend COVID money and, and state money on expanding um, internet. Because what there were several things we realized that was happening. The federal government were, was giving grants, and so was the state giving grants. And sometimes they were yeah. overlapping. So areas were getting double money, and some parts of the state weren't getting any money. And we need to figure out where the most need is, and then how do we get money to them, and what are the internet service providers in those communities. And I've got a bill that I'm going to bring that's going to allow more competition into the market, because right now we have a little bit more of a you know, if you have the rights to this territory, it's yours. Sure. Uh, I'm going to, I'm proposing a bill to allow, you know, for instance, like the Silicon Utility Boards to compete and go outside of their territory. Mm -hmm. So they could go into, you know, Holland's, for instance, and start providing internet there if, you know, just, just allow more competition in the market, which I think is going to help just because then if somebody says, well, if we don't do it now, then someone else is going to beat us to it. It's going to make it's going to incentivize some of those large companies from Charter or CenturyLink to to start yeah. or AT and T to start running fiber. If not, then somebody else is going to come in and do it because they're going to be allowed to do it. And you know, it's certainly advantageous for our children for sure. It's definitely advantageous for our children. It's and it's advantageous for our, our business, mm -hmm. our, our seniors. I, I always say that you know. There's two, one thing you talked about with our children, why we need the internet so bad is I think COVID showed kids can't do their homework, right. they can't learn, and the first steps of having a career, whether it's a, a skilled job, or is is the ability to, to to read. And if you can't read, you can't do arithmetic. It's going to be hard for you to become a plumber, or in any kind of skilled profession. And so that starts when you're in you know first, second, third grade. So they need to be able to do that work then because in 20 years, they're going to need to be able to have good paying jobs. Where do you see, <coughs> Ben, where do you see this going in the next two to three years? I think that you're going to see a massive growth, a massive <coughs> amount of work done to expand internet across the state. I, I, I want to do everything I can to make sure that the large amounts of money that are going to be spent are spent in East Alabama and District 33 specifically. Um, I, I was able to help Coosa Valley Co-op get a grant that's going to provide internet into Clay County mm -hmm. in the kind of the Millerville area and in the Kalita Valley, which I'm very excited about that. But that's still just a drop in the bucket sure for is. everything that, you know, a drop in the bucket for all the people that are without internet. But I think... And there's a surprisingly uh, number of people who don't have internet service. Th there's a surprising number. The areas I was just talking about, Kalita Valley in, in Clay County, if you come down 77 and turn on... Uh, County Road 7 and kind of run that route from Talladega towards uh, Goodwater, a lot of those people just do not have mm -hmm. access to internet. And so this is going to provide them internet, but the line still isn't going to run all the way down to where people still don't have internet. So we've got to figure out how do we connect it there and get it all the way to Hollands or how do we run it you know, into parts of Weagufka that don't have the mm -hmm. internet because there's, there's Central Alabama Co-op is building out, but there's going to be a gap in between where, you know, the, you know, how do we connect those yeah. dots and fill in those holes? And that's what the Digital Expansion Authority is going to do. But what we need to do is we need to be at the forefront and saying, here are our holes in our community. We need to be served and not, get, not mm. wait and get put on the back burner. Ben Robbins, uh, District 33 State Representative, a portion of Clay, Coos, and Talladega County is our guest this morning. Uh, I was saw the story this morning about... Uh, Gadsden and, and their uh, push to get people vaccinated for COVID-19. And, and, and the city is getting some uh, industry behind them. And, and for people who get the vaccine, take the vaccine, both shots, uh, uh, they're going to give them $100. 
And so there's a lot of push out there to get people vaccinated. Uh, Alabama, the lowest state in the nation with vaccinations. Uh, uh, you told me about Gadsden this morning, and I, I hadn't heard that. That's an interesting concept. I know some states, like Ohio, was doing a lottery, and, mm -hmm. and I know there's a lot of people getting creative and trying to incentivize um, vaccination. I know Scott Harris, our state public health officer, uh, made a statement this week that said he wasn't really sure how we increase vaccination yeah. rates. That. Um, and I've heard from some hospital administrators that they're having to throw out vaccinations because they've gone bad because yep. people aren't taking them. So, you know, I, I know that the governor to incentivize to or encourage younger people to get the vaccine did a TikTok challenge, um, which, you know, I don't that wouldn't really work on me, but it might for, you know, an 18 year old. Um, I, I think that. You know, I, I think for Gadsden, that's a good idea. I think if, if other cities want to pursue ideas um, of that nature, whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever city might do it, if they feel like that's in the best of their best need for their community, then I think they should pursue that option. I think that Scott Harris and the governor probably need to, if they, if we want to have a statewide comprehensive plan on how to expand vaccinations, it's going to need to come from our health office. Mm -hmm. It's going to need to come from them because they're going to, they're going to know the rates of vaccination. They're going to know where we're, where we need more vaccinations, where we, where we're, we're a little bit better in some parts of the state. So I would say that if we were going to have a statewide comp kind of incentive plan, I, I don't think that's going to happen based upon uh, Governor Ivey saying that she doesn't see the need for one and Scott Harris saying he's unaware of how we can and can get more vaccinations. Governor so. Ivey said at least two times that they, uh, she's not going to get in. Uh, the government has no business getting in about masking and, uh, you know, it's going to be up to the schools about masking and, and that kind of thing. What do you hear out and about uh, among not just government officials, but but regular people like me uh, about COVID. Are we concerned about this? I, I would say that the the concern is not as much that there was a you know obviously a year ago, six mm -hmm. months ago, the concern you know I I heard that a lot more than I heard right you know. But now I you know people most people tend to say. You use COVID in the past tense, as if, okay. you know, when, when COVID, you know, we're past COVID or COVID was when we were in the depths of COVID. Uh, so I think most people have kind of mentally moved beyond mm -hmm. COVID. Uh, I, I do think that I, I don't believe Alabama is going to go back to any kind of major restrictions, but I do think other parts of the country are more of our, yeah. you know, more of our Democrat leaning states are going to, which is going to have a, have an effect on Alabama because then if California, for instance, goes into a more restrictive lockdown, that means that our products from Alabama, we sell them to other parts of the country mm -hmm. and, and we want them to be open for business and as available to sell our products there as we are to buy their products. It, it makes for a stronger economy. So that, that will have ripple effects in Alabama. So I, I think that uh, for the public as a whole, I just kind of hear a little bit of it, maybe COVID was overblown or, or a lot of different views and concerns on, on COVID. Ben, why are people, why are businesses, large and small, still clamoring to get workers? I, I think that you've got, a lot of these are federal issues and why mm -hmm. they're clamoring for workers that, that need to be resolved on the federal side. I think that, you know, Governor Ivey agree, Governor Ivey stopped taking the extra federal money for unemployment, mm -hmm. which, you know, the, the issue is, is that when you have a federal 50 state approach, sometimes what sounds good in Massachusetts doesn't work in Alabama. Right. And when... In 2020, when you could have gotten full unemployment from the federal government, all the benefits, and you were at about $28,000, $30,000 a year, it doesn't make sense financially for some people. They say, well, why would I go work when I can make that much money mm -hmm. at home? Where in Massachusetts, that's a different story, for instance. But I think that Governor Ivey cutting, not taking the federal amount anymore for the unemployment is going to help put people back to work. 
But you know, now with the child tax credit coming in, sure. like I got my child tax credit this week. Um, it's just more money. It, it, we might have taken one thing away, but now we're getting an, another thing. And um, the we have just and so with all the federal money coming in, it's hard to then pull people back into the workforce because they're getting as much money as and they can. And it's certainly ad, adversely affecting businesses. It's definitely adversely affecting businesses. And the and the issue is, which we're starting to see, and I think we're going to see come you know really hard and really strong is inflation because then what's going to happen is you're going to have to start paying workers a lot more to get them to work which i don't have a problem paying workers more but it's it's the rate at which it happens so quickly which then makes all the materials that you're buying everything go up which then just creates a vicious cycle of everything going up at a tremendous rate that we can't really sustain Nothing really free in life. Either. Right, there's nothing free in life. <laughs> you know, if you give somebody three hundred dollars, yeah. then obviously, then oddly, somehow TVs increase by three hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. at Walmart. No doubt about it. Um, think there'll be a special session. There's definitely going to be one special session where we are going to have to redistrict the state. Uh, so what that means is every ten years, you know, you do your census, uh, and we're still getting census data. But with that, that means that all of your districts, like my state house district, a state senate district, your congressional district, all these districts, the populations change and move. So you've got to change the lines to fit the population. So that means some will get some districts get bigger, some get smaller, because all districts have the same population numbers within a you know a few thousand, mm-hmm. but they're they're all relatively the same. So you represent the same number of people in Montgomery or in Washington. So District 33, you see changes there? I do see some changes. Um, I don't know what they'll be exactly, but the state grew. Uh, we're over 5 million people now. So mm-hmm. what that means is every house district is going to have to grow by roughly 5,000 people. So that means we're going to have to find 5,000 mm-hmm. people. And since we didn't grow at the rate of you know Shelby County or some of the other counties in the state, that, that means we're probably going to have to grow and get a little bit bigger just in, land, in a yeah. land mass. Yeah. So hopefully we stay, I, District 33 stays within uh, Clay, Coosa, and Talladega County, and we don't stretch it out into mm-hmm. another county so mm-hmm. it can stay focused within Before we those. go this morning, uh, you get invited to a lot of events and things like that. And where are you going to be in the coming weeks? Uh, well, you know, I, I, last week I was at an event, I talked about the Silicon Utility Boards for the Electric Cities, yeah. and I really enjoyed that event because I was able to learn more about some of the local utility boards across the state. Uh, the, I'm going to go to an event for the Business Council of Alabama to kind of get updated on what's going on with the state in terms of the business community. and Ever learning, isn't it? Ever learning. And it's always, what I love about it is when you learn you always take an idea and you think, well, how can I apply yeah. that back back home? How yeah. can I apply that in District yeah. 33? Or what can I do to connect this person with this person in District 33 so we can we can grow? Uh, I could go on and on about all those kind of meetings I've set up. But you, you like to go into communities uh, such as Millerville and such as uh, Coosa County and, and meet with the grassroots people there. I do. I love meeting with the people because that's the way you really know what the issues are and you really know what 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 their problems are, mm-hmm. what they're dealing with, how you can help them because if you don't, it's all on a top-down approach and it's just numbers and it's just here's what we've heard from a poll. Well, I don't really like trusting polls or trusting those figures. I like hearing it from people's mouths because then that's it's more real than, you know, hearing reading this poll that oh, the majority of the people want this. Well, do the majority of the people in my district really want this? Is that what people want in Clay County, for instance? I overheard a conversation uh, not too long ago uh, of a, a, a small group of people talking about, talking about uh, they had seen you on this show several months ago, and they said, we're talking about, well, uh, you know, it's easy for him to get on the show, but I'd like to talk to him myself. Well, you're accessible. I am. You can send me a message on Facebook. <laughs> I uh, I know that, you know, like I, I need to... I've been talking to like, people from Sycamore have complained about their issue with uh, the, the post office system. Well, I, I owe two people a call today because I've been talking to Mike. I talked to everyone that I could in Montgomery, and I talked to Mike Rogers' office uh, because it's a federal issue, and I've already talked with someone in his office on what they need to do. And so I was going to give them a call this afternoon mm-hmm. and kind of catch them up to speed on what's going on. So if you call me, I'll 
I'll look into whatever your issue is and talk to who I need to. And it might take a week or two, but I'll get back go. to you and explain to you what, what you need to do or how we can solve it. District 33, State Representative Ben Robbins, freshman in Montgomery. Don't feel like a freshman now. Ben, thanks <laughs> for dropping by this morning. Uh, thank you so much. More day break right after this.